Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming my birth and delivery video as a first time mum. Before I went into labour, I actually watched so many delivery and birth videos and it helps um, give me an idea of what to expect. So hopefully my version or my video can, you know, help some first time mums out there and hopefully give some people an idea of what can happen and what may not happen um so yeah so first of all i was due on the 8th 8th no i wasn't i was due on the 10th of november 2015 which was a tuesday and i actually was two days early um aiden was born on the 8th of november um about half an hour before midnight before it turned the 9th and i remember pushing and i was wondering if it was gonna um be the 8th or the 9th but anyways we'll get to that um so first of all my labor didn't go to plan it didn't go how i expected in my birth plan i wanted to give birth in a birth center i wanted to use natural painkillers such as massage and um, gas and air um, no epidural or anything like that um, because if I wanted to use an epidural then I'd have to give um, birth in a delivery suite instead instead of the birth centre so that was my plan and yeah that was my plan and, and that's what I hoped for but obviously it didn't happen and sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to go so on Saturday morning which was the 7th at 6am I actually felt kind of wet down there um, and then I got up out of bed and then suddenly a big gush of water like just covered the entire floor and then I ran to the toilet and as I was sat in the toilet I was still dripping and that's when I realised that my waters had broken so I immediately called Tommy and told him to come home he was at work and good job he wasn't that far away and um, he was he left like 15 minutes before my waters broke so he could turn around and come home so Tommy was in such a panic he thought that you know if my waters have broken we're off to the hospi hospital we can give birth now <laughs> but obviously you know that's just a typical man's point of view so he came back we had a shower I called the midwife um, at the hospital and they told me to get some breakfast and just take my time and go in two hours later um, to get examined so that's what we did. I got my hospital bag, I had some breakfast and then we went to the hospital and this was like 8am and then she assessed me and said that I am not having any contractions, I don't have, feel any pain um, and that I should just go home and wait. So at that point me and Tommy just looked at each other and we was like, wait, like we were so psyched up, we was like this is going to be it, this is going to be you know we're gonna have our baby this is it but then we was told to go home so then we got home and nothing happened i felt fine and then it got to about 7 or 8 pm and my contractions started at first it felt like mild period pains and then it got stronger and stronger and by the time it was 1 am and um, my contractions were three minutes apart but they wasn't that painful they were still bearable like Every time I'd have a contraction, I would lean over the bed, but it would go away within like a minute or so, and it was bearable. I wasn't like in agony or anything, but I thought that because they're three minutes apart, I should call the hospital. So then I called the hospital, and the hospital told me to go back in to be assessed. So I got to the hospital about 2 a.m., and the midwife assessed me, and she said that I'm only two centimeters dilated, and that's not enough to admit in, me into hospital. So basically, she said, "Go home again and wait." So me and Tommy was just like, "Oh my god!" Like going home again. Good job we didn't live far from the hospital, but you know, it's the whole scenario of getting excited and going to the hospital, thinking that I'm going to have this baby, and then being sent home. So then we were sent home again, and she said that basically from the time my waters broke on um, the 7th at 6am, they're going to give me 36 hours. So that would have been Sunday at 7pm until, you know, to see if I have any contractions, and if I don't have any contractions, then I'm Gonna have to go into the hospital and be induced which wasn't part of my plan like i never looked into being induced or anything i thought that would be something that i'd look into if i was overdue um but yeah so that's what happened so 
came Sunday um, daytime and early evening like 4 or 5 p.m. my contractions were strong I was literally on the floor at home like still bearable I wasn't in tears or, or anything but it was really strong really strong cramps so then we went to the hospital about 7 p.m. and she put me into a bed and I had to wait until like god knows when until I to be assessed again and she was going to assess me and then figure out what kind of drugs or products or gel or whatever they use um, for me to be induced. I don't really know much about be being induced because I never looked into it but that's what was going to happen. So I got to the hospital 7pm, laid in the bed at about half 7, 8pm and then she didn't come in until about quarter past 9 to assess me and at that point I was in so much pain like my pain level went from like a six or a seven to like a nine and normally my pain tolerance is pretty high um I can I don't want to be like oh yeah my pain tolerance is pretty high but my pain tolerance is quite high and there's a lot of pain that I can take like I'm not like one to cry about pain but at that moment I was actually in tears like I couldn't control it. so I asked the woman for some paracetamol and um, some pain relief I thought she was going to give me like gas and air but she only gave me paracetamol and um, another tablet which I took and did nothing it did nothing I think my pain was just too too strong for paracetamol to work so then I said it got it got to about quarter to ten quarter to ten so I was laid in this bed in agony for about half an hour and the paracetamol didn't do anything and at that point she was we were still waiting to be transferred to the birth center but I had a change of mind it was hurting so so bad that I requested an epidural and so get an epidural I'm not going to be giving birth in the birth centre anymore I have to be in the delivery suite where there's doctors and um, like not just midwives so that they can perform the epidural basically so then at 10 p.m. she finally came back and said oh we have a room ready for you in the delivery suite so you can get your epidural and yeah so by the time she assessed me at like 10 p.m. I was five centimeters dilated and she was like actually you don't need to be induced you can just wait it out we'll put you in the delivery suite we'll give you an epidural and labor should you know it should be happening very quick and you should be given birth soon but I didn't imagine how quick it would be <laughs> so basically they put me in a wheelchair and wheeled me over to the delivery center delivery center delivery suite and at that point I was in agony I was actually screaming I couldn't control my pain and just sitting down in a chair I couldn't sit still I was like fidgeting and moving and I don't even know what happened I couldn't control my own body so once we got into the delivery suite at 10 p.m she hooked me up to the machine so that she can monitor um, Aiden in my bump and she also took my blood test at about quarter past 10 so that she could you know um, send it off make sure everything's okay so that I'm all clear for the epidural and it took a while at that point they left the room because they were sorting out the epidurals they were bringing in trays and they were waiting for the feedback from the doctor and at that point I couldn't control myself I couldn't even stay on the bed I was rolling off the bed I was laid on the floor I was crouching over the bed I was you know when the pain kicked in I couldn't control myself except for to fidget and move I couldn't physically stay still and at that point I just thought this is it basically my contractions went from five minutes apart four or five minutes apart to about one minute apart so I was literally having a contraction letting myself breathe for like 20 seconds um, by the way I forgot to say that I was having gas and air by the time I got to the delivery suite so I was high on gas and air I puked all over the midwife when I took my first inhale of gas and air because I was in so much pain that I took too much and then when I let go I felt a sudden rush over my head and I just puked all over the floor and all over the midwife which thinking back was pretty disgusting and I feel so bad but that's what happened but I still wanted the gas and air because that was the only thing that I could have there and then epidural had to wait 
so it came to about quarter past quarter past so it came to about quarter to 11 and the midwives came back and she said we're still waiting for your results um, it's not going to be long, we've put it in as air journey, it should be back very soon and at that time everything was already set up, I had my hospital gown on, the tray was next to me with the needles and the epidural and whatnot. but at that point in moment I was literally screaming and crying and the midwives took a look at each other and said actually we're going to assess you again because you know I was only five centimeters like 45 minutes ago so she said she'll assess me again and see what's happening with my body so when she assessed me they looked at each other and they were like okay you're actually fully dilated and you're ready to give birth so you don't you do not need the epidural you do not need the gas and air anymore when you feel ready start pushing and I was like oh my god oh my god no wonder it hurt so much I was like literally on the verge of pushing my baby out so then we, we started timing the contractions and with each contractions they were telling me to push and at first it was really hard because I've never pushed like that before and I didn't know really what to do but then after like five or ten minutes I kind of got the gist of pushing and I realized that you know I needed to get this baby out because not only was he ready to come out but I was also in a lot of pain so I kind of like psyched myself up and I was literally screaming I was psyched my, I was so psyched up that I in my head I was just thinking let's get this baby out so then I started pushing and pushing and then at half past 11 30 minutes after I started pushing Aiden came out and oh my god that was such a big relief when he came out all the pain just stopped actually when you start pushing I think that it doesn't hurt anymore because you're so psyched up and the contractions hurt so much in comparison to the pushing that pushing just felt like nothing it just felt like you know a lot of people and women will say this but it just feels like you're pushing out a number two which is quite true a lot of people told me that before I gave birth and I was like how is that possible because it's a lot bigger a baby is like huge compared to a number two but when it actually comes to that pushing stage that's what it feels like basically so yeah when he was out all the pain just stopped and I was just so happy to have him in my arms but at the same time I was really high on gas and air because I was sucking it so hard and I never let it go because my contractions were so frequent and so fast that I didn't have time to take the gas and air away and just like catch a breath and just calm myself and relax again all of my breathing techniques that I practiced went out of the window like none of those helped at all so yeah that's basically what happened so all in all I was in early labor for 36 hours and I was in actual labor for two and a bit hours and then baby was born and Aiden was in this world so yeah it's not how I expected it to be but I'm glad that once I was in the hospital it went really quick and I wasn't like hanging around in the hospital walking around waiting for this baby I'm happy that it just happened really quick and it was over with because you know that pain I don't think I've ever felt anything like that in my life and I don't want to scare anyone because everyone's birth stories and deliveries is different like all of my friends who have given birth are completely different to mine um, some of them the waters didn't break until they started pushing but mine broke like really early on so that's my birth story and I hope it helps some of you first time mums of what can happen what to expect and you know that's just what happened to me after I gave birth I was wheeled to another room with other mums and newborns and they had to monitor Aiden for um, I think it was 12 or 16 hours just because my waters had broken very early on and I wanted to make sure that me or him didn't have any infections and we was all good so I stayed in hospital for like the night time and then a whole of the afternoon and I left the hospital at about 7 p.m. the next day and everything was all good and we get was given the all clear to go home so yeah thanks for watching and I hope this video helps some first time mums I know it's really hard um, when you're going into something and not knowing what to expect so yeah thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one